Hello everyone, I hope you are all well and staying safe. Welcome to this Level 2 Customer Service Practitioner COVID-19 update for employers, providers and apprentices. My name is Veronica Capaldi and I am one of the four lead independent endpoint assessors for the Customer Service Practitioner Standard. Here at City and Guilds, we are committed to supporting you through this difficult time by keeping learning and assessments progressing over the coming months so that we can help as many people as possible gain their qualifications and continue with their careers. We have been working hard to keep endpoint assessment going for apprentices in recent weeks, including reducing any barriers preventing apprentices continuing on their EPA journey. To ensure continuity for apprentices currently on this standard, we have applied to Ofqual and IFATE for a dispensation for the practical observation, the component that requires a face-to-face -face assessment with the apprentice. We are delighted to confirm that the dispensation has been granted for this standard and the observation will be replaced with a witness testimony to confirm competency supported by a witness testimony Q&A assessment. This presentation will explain what this now means for the endpoint assessment process for employers, providers and apprentices. We have a dedicated COVID-19 EPA FAQ page that includes support for customers and learners to adapt and progress in these challenging times. This can be accessed by visiting the link on this slide. Now let's look at what will be covered within this presentation. We'll be reviewing the Level 2 Customer Service Practitioner Endpoint Assessment, the Gateway Requirements and Booking an Endpoint Assessment, the Witness Requirements, the Knowledge, Skills and Behaviours covered by the Practical Observation, supporting completing the employer witness testimony to confirm competency, helping you to prepare the apprentice for witness testimony Q&A assessment, resits and further information and support. We have also provided a guidance document to support the witness with the completion of the witness testimony recording form and this is referred to throughout this presentation. Firstly, let's take a look at the various components of the Level 2 Customer Service Practitioner Endpoint Assessment. The EPA consists of three components. The Apprentice Showcase with Interview, which contributes 65%, the Practical Observation, which is 20%, and the Professional Discussion, which contributes to 15%. Supporting information on the Customer Service Practitioner Standard can be located at these two links. The first, the Endpoint Assessment Pack for Centres and Endpoint Assessment Customers, and the link below, which is the Level 2 Customer Service Practitioner Assessment Plan. The Endpoint Assessment for the Level 2 Customer Service Practitioner will take place in the following order remotely via GoToMeeting. It'll start with the Witness Testimony Q&A Assessment, which will be a maximum of 30 minutes, followed by the Showcase Interview, which will be a minimum of 15 minutes and a maximum of 30 minutes, followed by the professional discussion, which will be a minimum of 45 minutes to a maximum of one hour. The apprentice will be offered the opportunity to take a short break in between the showcase interview and the professional discussion. When you are ready to make a booking, our dedicated endpoint assessment team will support you with the booking via the normal channels. The following documentation must be submitted to the portal two weeks prior to the EPA date. The Apprentice Showcase and the completed Witness Testimony Recording Form. So let's now look at the revised assessment that will cover the skills and behaviours normally covered by the Practical Observation. The Practical Observation will be replaced with an employer witness testimony to confirm competency against the areas of the standard that are currently covered by the practical observation. This will be completed by a relevant witness. We will be looking at who can complete the witness testimony later in this presentation. This will be supported by a witness testimony Q&A assessment. This will take place between the independent endpoint assessor and the apprentice based on the examples provided within the employer's witness testimony. The witness is not expected to be part of this assessment. Let's now look at some of the key aspects of the employer witness testimony form, including who can be a witness for the apprentice and what evidence we are asking you to provide. Let's first look at the witness requirements. 
The witness must state their name, job title, position and relationship to the apprentice. The witness must work in a role equivalent to first line management of the apprentice or above, for example a team leader. The witness must have worked with the apprentice for a minimum of three months during the course of their apprenticeship. They must provide work-based examples as to how the apprentice has met the skills and behaviours across the standard covered by the practical observation. The witness must sign a declaration that the examples they've provided are true accounts. Let's now look at section one of the witness testimony form. Section one will be where the witness is asked to complete their relevant information and then will be asked to provide specific examples of how the apprentice has met the skills and behaviours from across the standard. Let's now look at the requirements for completing specific examples for the apprentice. The witness will be asked to record two approximately dated examples as to how the apprentice has met the skills and behaviours for each of the modules covered by the practical observation. The witness testimony can be in an audio or written format. The witness testimony should provide the opportunity for examples to map holistically across multiple modules across the standard. There are no word count requirements or restrictions, but the focus of the witness testimony is to cover the relevant skills and behaviours with quality examples of competence. We do not expect pages and pages, but please do refer to the example that is on the guidance document to support you with this. Let's take a look at the skills and behaviours that are covered by the practical observation. The practical observation would normally enable the apprentice to evidence their skills and behaviours from across the standard to demonstrate genuine and demanding work objectives. Now let's take a closer look at the skills and behaviours the witness needs to capture within the examples in the recording form. Interpersonal skills, so how the apprentice questions, listens, builds rapport and has a positive engagement with their customers. Communication skills, verbal and non-verbal. And the behaviours, starting with equality, treating all customers as individuals. Presentation, dress code, professional language. And right first time, establishing what each customer requires and manage their expectations. Taking ownership from the first contact and then taking responsibility for fulfilling your promise. These skills and behaviours are summarised for you in the observation grading table, which has been included in the guidance document and is also available within the EPA pack for centres that can be accessed on the link that was shown earlier. Now let's look at the work-based examples the witness will be asked to provide. This is an example of what the witness will be asked to provide for the first module, Interpersonal Skills. The witness will be asked to provide two approximately dated examples of how the apprentice has demonstrated practical competency against the standard. This can be the month and year it occurred rather than the specific date. Please remember the witness testimony can be submitted in an audio or written format. Guidance has been provided as to how the witness is to record the audio testimony within the guidance document and we will also be covering this later in the presentation. The key thing to remember is the examples that the witness provides must attest to the criteria. You will see both the pass and distinction criteria have been listed to allow the witness to provide examples that encompass both the pass and distinction criteria. The testimony will also provide the opportunity for examples to map holistically across the standard, just as they would during a face-to-face -face observation. It may be that one example could cover criteria from multiple modules across the standard and the witness is encouraged to provide quality examples that can be mapped holistically across the standard. This can be recorded in the relevant box at the bottom of each module. Here is an example of how the witness has recorded how the apprentice has met the past criterion 1.1 for interpersonal skills. As you can see, the example includes details of how the apprentice has practically demonstrated the skills and behaviours for the past criterion for this module. The example has also been cross-referenced and mapped to other areas of the standard and has also met some of the past criteria for communication and right first time. Please be aware that if the apprentice has a purely face-to-face -face or non-facing role, only the past criteria for face-to-face -face or non-facing needs to be met and this applies to a particular modules.
Let's look at an example of this. Presentation module. Only criteria 1.1 to 1.3 would need to be fulfilled with the examples if the apprentice has a face-to-face -face role. Or pass criteria 1.4 to 1.7 if they were in a non-facing role. Now let's look at how an audio witness testimony would be recorded and the requirements. If the witness is providing an audio witness testimony, they should ensure the recording includes the date, the witness's name, position and relationship to the apprentice at the start of the recording. A clear indication of the module that the example is referring to. The example is clearly time stamped within the relevant module and the example is cross-referenced to other modules where appropriate using the cross-referencing box. Let's now look at an example from one of those modules. Here is an example from the Equality module. Both examples have been time-stamped and the examples have also been cross-referenced to other modules using the cross-referencing box. These examples have also met the pass criteria from right first time 2.1 to 2.4. Now let's look at section 3 of the witness testimony, the witness declaration. The witness must ensure the examples included are a true and accurate account of real work-based examples. Both the witness and the apprentice must sign and date the witness testimony. Please do involve the apprentice with the process of compiling the examples. Ensure they are familiar with the examples provided, as this is a key part of preparing them for the Q&A assessment which is what we will look at next. As with the other two components of the endpoint assessment, it's important the apprentice is also prepared for the questions and answer assessment, which will be the first part of the endpoint assessment. So how can you prepare your apprentice for the questions and answer assessment? The apprentice should be involved in the compilation of the examples and should be familiar with the selection of examples that have been included. During the questions and answer assessment, the independent endpoint assessor will ask the apprentice questions based upon the examples that have been submitted in the witness testimony recording form. The independent endpoint assessor will ask questions to clarify any aspect of the examples they are unsure about. They will also use questions to authenticate the examples included in the witness testimony. Now let's take a look at resets. Apprentices who have failed their live practical observation can undertake this method as a reset. Apprentices can reset this assessment if they fail. Apprentices can also opt to pause and wait for a practical observation. And apprentices can still achieve a distinction if they reset this component. We hope you have found this presentation informative. As mentioned, we have produced a guidance document that accompanies this presentation to support the witness with the completion of the recording form, but we appreciate you may still have some questions. Please contact us on our dedicated customer service email address or telephone number. Thank you very much for listening and we look forward to working with you all in the near future.